If we have imported a geometry to SimFlow and want to create mesh, we should go to the Hex Meshing panel and select the geometry as meshable by clicking the Mesh Geometry button. In some cases we may need to refine the mesh on the surfaces of the geometry. For this purpose, we should expand the list of options available for this geometry and increase the refinement level, for example from 0 to 1. Next, we should move to the Base tab, where we can specify size of so-called Initial or Base Mesh. If we click the Auto Size button, the dimensions of the initial mesh will be adjusted to the geometry which is currently visible in the graphic window. As we can see, the mesh is relatively coarse when default settings are used, so we need to increase the number of divisions along each axis of the coordinate system. For example, let's use 80 divisions along the X axis, 20 along the Y axis, and also 20 along the Z axis. In the cell size field we can see length of the initial mesh cell in three directions. The initial mesh has some default boundaries. We can change their names and types here. For example, now we can set names of some of the boundaries. This one we will name Inlet. We can also change the name of this one to Outlet. And this one we can leave named Boundaries. But these are walls, so we can also change the type of this boundary to Wall. The rest of boundaries will have the type Patch. This boundary type should be used if you want to assign boundary conditions such as Pressure Inlet, Outlet, Velocity Inlet, Mass Flow Inlet and similar. The next important thing is that we should move so-called Material Point to a volume in which we want to create mesh. In order to move it, press Ctrl on your keyboard, left click on your mouse and simply drag the point here. We can also take a look here to make sure that the point is located inside the geometry. We can see that the position of the point is correct, so we can now move to the Mesh tab and click the Mesh button. It will take a while to create the mesh. Once the meshing is finished, we can see that the mesh was created inside the geometry, so in the volume in which the material point was located. However, as you can see, this mesh has only one boundary named Catalytic Converter. The reason for this is that even though we have set separate boundaries for inlet and outlet from the converter, they were set for the default boundaries of the initial mesh, while meshing stopped on the surfaces of the geometry and didn't reach initial mesh boundaries. Let's check what will happen if we move the point to another location. Drag the point outside the catalytic converter geometry, but inside the initial mesh. We can pick location of the material point using this button. When we click on it and press Ctrl, we can click, for example, on this corner. The point will be moved to the corner and then we can simply drag it inside the initial mesh but outside the geometry. So it looks like this. Now we should go to the Mesh tab and click the Mesh button again. The mesh has been created. We can see that it has completely different shape and also if we go to the Mesh panel we can see different boundaries, inlet and outlet in addition to the catalytic converter boundary. The reason for this is that the volume between the surfaces of the catalytic converter geometry and the initial mesh boundaries has been meshed, because we located the material point in this volume. However, this is not what we would want to achieve in this particular case, and we should always remember that the point should be located inside the volume in which we want to create mesh. Therefore, it may be pointless in some cases to set names and types of the initial mesh boundaries if mesh should be created inside an enclosed geometry which is entirely located within the initial mesh.